Um, let's talk about what being a rebel energetically actually means and see if you're self-sabotaging yourself and if your rebellion is self-defeating. As a therapist, one of the things that comes up a lot is what we would call resistance. And I used to just think, oh, resistance is this like mental block or whatever. It's not like something you could feel or tangible. It's just when a client goes through something. Until I became a psychotherapist on a real level where all of my energy matched and everything came together. And I was like, resistance is real. Um, it's a real scratching effect vibrationally with life itself. And a lot of the people that I work with are resistant to what is. A lot of us are living in a life that our body hasn't caught up with yet, right? The habit of fear, the habit of recreating the old patterns, the habit of recreating the old thoughts exists in here. And we're going, wait, I can intellectually see it, but it's still here. How do I eradicate it from my body? And the way to do that is to not be in resistance to where we actually are, right? So a lot of us, especially if you are deeply empathic and you experience life as a, on a broad scale, you see a lot of contrast. I see a lot of contrast, right? Where there's extreme trauma and poverty and extreme, you know, whatever. They, it's easy for them, except it's not easy for them. And I'm like, wait, what? I thought if I had a million dollars and a family that loved me, that life would be easy and it's not easy for them. And I'm like, wait, I'm confused, right? Uh, should I be worried about my own self? Because I don't have any of that and I'm happy. Or then when you see poverty and extreme trauma and then you go, wait, I'm out of that space and I don't, that's not me anymore. And am I spoiled? Am I be betraying the program in which, you know, it took me years to get out of and how do I get those people out of this program? The contrast is real and it's really extreme. And a lot of times it can pull me out of position where I go, oh my God, am I spoiled or am I, should I want more? Because this person's obviously like, you know, they have it all and they're not happy. Or should I want less and am I spoiled for what I have? You know, the whole thing is, pulls me out of position to where I am. And then I get in resistance to that, which where I am, right? Staying, and this is the definition of staying in your own lane. So many of us are ambivalent about life that uh, we, we are in simultaneous resistance and moving forward. And what that looks like on a very practical level, uh, one time I did a rope swing and I was on a platform and it was the first time I'd done a rope swing. I was like, I don't know, probably 14 years old. I'm not a huge fan of dark water by any means. Uh, this is another example. Like I would, uh, if I had to get in the pond water at camp, which they forced us to do, one time I saw a snake in there and I was like, I'm never getting in that water. I would win every single race because I was like, just get me out of this water. And in weird ways, resistance can seem actually like it's a functional tool. In that case, I was like, yes, this is amazing. I'm gonna win because I need to get out of this water. But resistance is non-functional. It's literally non-functional because I could have easily just, uh, uh, with ease swam instead of that insane resistance to being that where I was. So I'm on this platform about to go into dark water and I'm way high up in a tree and I'm holding onto the rope swing and somebody says go and I start to go and I go no I'm not going and I'm literally about to fall out of this tree and I grab the rope because I had let go of the rope I was like nope not going and my feet slipped and I grabbed the rope and uh, went like this and my hand slipped all like slid all the way down the rope. I fell into the water and I came out. I didn't even have skin on my hands. Just like my hands were red, just burned. Like they, they were the thinnest amount of skin that you can imagine on your hand. That's what resistance is. Constantly burning ourselves with the, okay, I'm going to do it, but I can't do it. Um, and this, or I, I, I said I wanted to be here, but now I don't want to be here. I take it back. Uh, I said I wanted to come, but this isn't what I thought it would look like. So now I'm in resistance. I said I wanted to create this life. I got everything I wanted, but this is what I thought it would feel like. So now I'm in resistance, right? So resistance is a uh, futile rebellion. It's just like absolute rebellion to life, to what is. So that's the number one thing our demographic really has to work with. It's like, oh, I have all these blocks. You might have blocks, but you have resistance actually to where you are. And if you stop resisting where you are, those blocks show themselves in circular thought forms and then dissipate. 
But if you're in resistance to where you are, those blocks feel like walls and they just build up around you and then your identity is in here and you're pissed off and they're all out there and they seem to be doing good and they're blah, blah, blah. You're not doing good in here. Why does everybody have to be fake? Because everybody's like acting like they're happy. They can't really be that happy. Some people are actually that happy, by the way. Um, the resistance to everything that we want is what a lot of people I work with have. Um, everything that they want, they're in resistance to. So um, I think that if there's something that you're in resistance to, really energetically step into what you want and come at it from that space instead of, I don't know if I want it, I'm in, I'm out. That wobbling effect vibrationally without any roots to like a position keeps you void of yourself. And there's so much room for projection and insanity to come in if you're an empath void of yourself because you're ambivalent or resistant toward life and you're like i don't know which way to go i can't make a decision get in here let your guts make a decision they'll drive you you don't really have to do that much work all you gotta do is listen so if you're in resistance to life as it is all you gotta do is this is the thing about all manifestation and i talk about this in a chapter and earn your luck i'm not really aiming at manifestation and anybody can manifest what I am aiming at, aiming at is what I would call realization. And what you actually realize on a spiritual level, your creative self through the manifestation of the thing that you want, right? This is all about realizing reality, not manifesting a reality. And a lot of us have this reality that we're living in that our bodies haven't caught up to yet. That, you know, the body hasn't realized, oh, I'm in a safe place. I don't have to run the caregiving script. I don't have to run the I'm not worthy unless I'm doing something. I don't have to run the I don't have the right to relax script. I'm safe. The body hasn't caught up yet. But when you can get the mind to stop doing that scratching effect at like I'm resisting this still most of the time. I work with people who are in a position they once really wanted but they're still so addicted to resisting what is and so fault to of our own right at some point it was a a tool that was a really good defense mechanism but now it's going to slap us right in the face okay so if you want to realize yourself the the christ in you as a creator the number one thing to get your body in a space where it is aligned to the frequency that that is true we have to get to where we are, not try to go to where we want to go. We have to get to where we actually are and go, whoa, what if this is enough? Can I let this be enough? Can I let this be enough? That doesn't mean I want, don't want more, but can I stop the scratching at the screen effect, right? The screen of life that I don't like the way it looks, or I don't like the way it feels, or it looks the way I used to think that it would feel if it looked this way, and it still feels the way that I used to feel, and I thought that this would change it, now I'm resisting the fact that I worked so hard to get to a place that doesn't even feel any different. That scratching at the screen part is a problem. We have to remember, we have to get behind our eyes instead of out here clawing at the screen and recognize, you know, and this is not a night, I am a projector in the human, um, design thing and this is not a psychological uh i don't mean projection in a psychological sense but what i do mean is on a level of you know christ consciousness being in you we have to be mindful of the kind of projector that we want to be right a lot of us are so self-negating that we're always just like who's projecting something onto me and how can i play into that by either avoiding that they're projecting it onto me blaming them for projecting onto me or being exactly what they want we don't have to do that to ourselves, right? We can be the projector so that we expand into the thing, into the screen in a way that we don't want to slice the screen because we understand it's a part of us and we understand that we're the creation of it. And that actually right where we are is exactly enough to get to where we want to go. But most people can't get to where they want to go because they won't get to where they are, truthfully. So if you want to get real and really realize yourself through your manifestations, not just create manifestations and then be pissed off that they didn't feel the way that you thought they'd feel when you created them. You really wanna realize yourself. You gotta recognize your rebellion to life and your non-choice to stay in it, right? When it gets hard, you're like, man, it got hard. This isn't fair. Why is it, e why does it look easy for other people? Why is it so hard for me to be human and live like, it's hard for everybody, okay? You are not alone in the fact that you feel alone. You are not alone in that, right? We're all alone in our little vessel 
looking for the same thing, playing different roles, feeling the same ways, right? It's not easier for anybody else, despite the fact that we want to go, well, you didn't have as much trauma as me and blah, blah, blah. So it is easier. Um, creating matter, creating a life is the same. It takes the same amount of effort with or without resources externally for somebody whose job it is to create uh, externally with their inner resources. Does that make sense? So it's the same effort uh, for everybody, truly, who is trying to do the work of, oh, I know what it's like to not have the inner resources that, that I have to create. And that is the thing that I expand into. And the inner resource, oh, interesting. When I have that and I can expand into it, the screen becomes less like something I want to claw at and more something I want to go, oh, let me dance on this stage. Interesting. So be where you are, even if you don't want to be there. Don't resist where you are because if you want to get to where you are wanting to go you have to get to where you are and that starts with not resisting exactly where you are you don't have to love it just stop scratching at the screen realize you're the projector and realize how you want the world to feel about your projections is up to you because they are gonna feel it. They are gonna, you're gonna walk into rooms and people are gonna feel what you're emitting to the world. And if you're projecting, oh, this world sucks, everybody's separated, this is fucked up. Well, everybody's gonna feel fucked up and nobody's gonna wanna connect with you because you're gonna feel separated. They're gonna feel that. It's a real thing. So stop clawing at the screen of your life. You're there for a reason and it's okay. Can let it be enough. Let it be enough just for a day, just for one day. And practice that for 50 days, just for one day. Let me let this be enough. Okay, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I am Stacy Hoke, psychotherapist, somatic embodiment coach, author of Imperfectly Sane and Earn Your Luck, a field guide for living beyond your narcissistic parents' wildest dreams. Check me out at stacyhoke.com if you haven't already to get on my newsletter. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.